Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the food forest. Today's video, we're actually going to talk about um, things that you can do in your own lives to make your own life better, but will spiral into also helping the, the planet and the ecosystem. Many people who don't know my channel or are just finding me for the first time, um, maybe you don't know my backstory. Basically, I'm an engineer and um, I got into this gardening stuff only about five years ago. I actually, prior to that, had barely ever even planted a tree, certainly never grew any of my own food. And um, I started to kind of get um, wind of some of the ecological disasters that were coming. And you can really get bogged down into this sense of dread. Now, for me in my own life, that sense of dread actually was an impetus to change. It was an impetus to start growing some of my own food. So I started looking into what do I have to do to grow tomatoes. And anywhere you look, it's, you know, you got to fertilize, you got to put herbicides, pesticides, nemicides. And you start, you start realizing that the way, the way that humans grow food is basically to kill everything else and then grow food in a sterile environment of poison. To me, that seemed weird. It seemed really strange. And then I came across Jeff Lawton and I came across permaculture. And then I came across people like Mark Shepard and Alan Savory and Sepp Holzer and uh, Sean Dombrowski over at Edible Acres. People like this started to really change the way that I saw growing food. I found out about the loss of topsoil epidemic, which to me is probably one of the scariest ones because it's basically the worst parts of the movie Interstellar. I uh, found out about bee collapse and then found out about the fact that it's not just bees collapsing, kind of everything is collapsing. Learned that we're basically sitting inside the sixth major extinction event, the history of the planet. And no one's really talking about it. I mean, people are talking about it, but it's not on your news outlets. I saw videos of, um, you know, this couple who created this giant forest, this 30-year-old permaculture food forest in Australia from the YouTube channel Happen Film. My philosophy about what to do in the world isn't go to a pristine area and live there and enjoy your life. It's to find a place that's degraded and fix it up. Twenty-three years ago we started developing the food forest system here. A food forest is a permanent planting, so you want to set up a, just like a forest system. The big trees and the middle-sized trees and the bottom layer and the ground layer, they work together. Some plants pick up some minerals and give others back and the other one does something else. It's really lovely to put them together and create a, a forest system that's for birds and insects and for us. That YouTube channel probably transformed me more than any other channel, including all the other ones that I've mentioned, because the cinematography and the filmography is just fantastic. I got into some of the, the interviews from people like Nicole Foss on just general sustainability and where we're going. So then I just kept planting. You know, the first couple trees that I put into my food forest they were fun and then I started adding things for the bees and that was really cool I started adding bushes to get the seven layer thing going and it started to get really fun I was noticing hummingbirds coming back I was noticing tons of earthworms my soil was largely dead I started to get into the soil science from people like Dr. Elaine Ingham and Dr. John Todd and as I learned more about the microbiology in the soil, I was comparing my garden area to my grass, my garden area to other people's gardens. And it was, it was pretty evident to me that there was big changes happening on my land. Now it was around this time that probably the biggest source of existential dread was really weighing down on me. And it wasn't just climate change, is carbon the good guy or the bad guy? It was how are we going to transition off of fossil fuels if we're not even actively trying to do it? It was looking at how much energy per barrel does it take to pull fossil fuels out of the ground now compared to when they started. What about shale? And it's pretty clear that 
regardless of how you feel about is fossil fuels causing climate change, the undisputable fact is that we have to get off fossil fuels and we're not even trying to do it. Now, at the same time in my personal life at work, I had taken on a job to basically run a nuclear reactor in the control room to be the person in the NASA control center that's actually, you know, flying the ship. So it was a tremendous um, honor and opportunity to do it. It's about a four year program. And I, I had spent three years on that program up to that point, And I was successful up to that point. I hadn't ever failed the test. And I was getting to the decision point in that process where I either finish that uh, program or I exit it. So I was starting to come into conflict with how much money do I need in my life? Why am I chasing money over time with my family? Why am I chasing money over time with my children? What am I going to even do with that money? Am I just going to buy more stuff that I don't need? Can I do more things with my life? So long story short, I walked away from that program. I walked away from a massive salary and decided that I would choose experiences and time and my ability to influence the planet and do good things over chasing money. And looking back at that choice, it was the hardest choice I ever had to make, but at the same time, it was the easiest choice I ever had to make. And probably the single choice that I've ever made in my life that's profoundly changed it the most. I'm 100% I'm a different person today than I would have been had I gone down that path. The second major change happened pretty much at the exact same time. I had discovered permaculture, I'd started a garden, I tasted that first tomato, and I changed my life forever from that moment um, when I decided I was going to stop worrying about all this existential dread and I was going to actually start doing something about it. And that change led to me creating this. And since then, I've expanded what I've done here in many places of my land, where this is actually probably about one sixth, maybe even one tenth of what I've planted out on my land. And then when I compare to a wild planting, the gorilla gardening, this is nothing. This is nothing compared to the changes that I've made just for having discovered permaculture. So I would say if there's one change that you can make in your life, it's to start something like this. Whether it's on a rooftop balcony in a bunch of pots, you know, whether it's in a backyard against a fence in a suburban lot, start something. Start even just growing some tomatoes. Because every tomato that we grow is one that doesn't have 2,000 kilometers of travel on it in the industrialized food chain. Plus, I mean, it just tastes better. And when you eat a fruit that spent its whole time ripening on a vine, that ripening process is the tree or the plant putting nutrients into the fruit. So the longer that you can let that happen, the more nutritious the fruit is. Additionally, the second you pick fruit, the second you cut vegetables, it starts decaying. So when you cut lettuce out of a pot on your balcony and eat it 
five minutes later in a salad, that lettuce is stocked full with nutrients compared to a lettuce shipped by truck, you know, kept moist and humid so it wouldn't look bad, was cut two weeks ago. The whole time decomposing and losing the nutrient value in the lettuce. The second most impactful thing you can do to drive change is to just start eating less meat. So I used to be an athlete. I used to be a baseball player. I played for my city team at the highest competitive level and then I played in university as a I was actually the captain of my varsity baseball team for four years. When I was a varsity athlete, I used to work out in the morning and the afternoon. I swelled up to like 205 pounds and I was eating about 4,000 to 5,000 calories a day. Most of it was meat. So I was eating meat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I would have steak pretty much every single day of the week. Those are the habits that I developed in my most formative years. and. I'll be honest, I love the taste of meat. It's very hard to give up. But I'm doing everything that I can to slowly over time cut the amount of meat that I'm eating. I think my eventual goal, I would love to become vegan. Um, we really like eggs. Um, my wife especially loves eggs. We've gone from eating meat you know, every single day to we'll have a little bit of meat now and then. Um, but one thing I do really want to push on my kids is understanding where that meat comes from and the choices that we make when we actually eat that meat. But I want to, at least any meat we do eat, get it from a place where we know that the animal at least had a fantastic life until it had one bad day. So this means essentially supporting permaculture-based meat raising systems like silvopasture, free range chickens, um, and ideally I would like to set a goal for myself to actually come completely off meat at the very least and uh, ideally then to maybe think about transitioning to full blown veganism. Now I don't want to push anything on anybody but if we're going to make a change on this planet it has to be starting with the way that we both treat animals that we do eat and also the amount of animals that we do eat. Because not only are there ethical concerns, there's actually land use concerns, there's water quality concerns, there's air quality concerns, and there's climate change concerns. So for example, even if you don't believe in the whole climate change thing, there's a bunch of reasons still why we should probably try to give up as much meat as we can. Even if you're in an apartment building, where you can't start a forest, you can't plant trees, um, you don't even have anywhere in wild areas where you can go and gorilla plant some oaks and chestnuts and walnuts. Uh, you can still make massive, massive contributions to the health of our ecosystems, the health of our planet, by just choosing to simply um, consume less, specifically with meat. Let's talk about the rest. Just one more thing on that. What we're striving for, or what we should be striving for, isn't a small portion of the people doing things perfectly. What we just need to do is stop focusing on perfection and start focusing on better than where we are. So if you're eating meat, just eat less meat. If you're consuming products, consume less. If you can't grow all your food, grow something. All these ways that we can impact the planet if it's better than what we're doing, let's just start there and let's get to where we need to be with baby steps. Number three on my list is going to be to consume less. So whether or not you wanna take this as an extreme challenge, like doing something like minimalism, trying to get the amount of things that you own as low as possible and continuously challenge yourself to get rid of things um, in a good way. Um, one of the things that we did this last weekend is we cleaned out our basement of all the stuff that we're storing and keeping back down there and then tried to upcycle as much of that as possible into other people's hands who are going to use them. Just some small examples. We had some extra growing lights that I don't have space for, so we sold those. They're just sitting in our basement. Someone else was going to go buy growing lights when they could instead buy ones from me that are just sitting there instead. There's an old dartboard on our in our backyard that we or in our basement that we never use. 
Um, there's old toys from the kids that we don't use. There's old hockey equipment, old clothing. Try to look for areas where you can downsize the things that you're holding and keeping and storing in your life that's just cluttering your life up, stressing you out, and turn that into something that someone else will use. And in the same way, if you're going to go buy something new, look at places like Facebook Marketplace, Kijiji, Craigslist to upcycle other people's stuff into your life. And try to cut back especially on stuff like single-use plastics, wrappers, packaging. So if you can take your own reusable containers to the store to fill them up, if you can do your own reusable sh uh, shampoo bottles, for example, if you can make your own deodorant, anywhere in your life where you can reuse something and get value out of it, try to just chip away at that. It doesn't have to be a wholesale lifestyle change. Just try to make small changes here and there. One tip that I love, and this will be my challenge to you, if you want to go buy something, don't buy it, write it down, and if you still need it in a week, go buy it. We're impulse creatures, especially now with how easy things are to buy online. It's very easy to be shopping for something, think, oh yeah, I'll go buy that and then go make the purchase and buy it. And now this thing is being shipped and wrapped from China, traveling halfway across the world. And maybe if you waited a week, you'd be like, yeah, I don't know, I don't really need that thing anymore. And you wouldn't buy it. Not only is this better for the environment, obviously, it's better for your own personal wallet. It's better for your own economics. The less stuff that you buy, the more money you have left over. A penny saved is a penny earned. That is probably the wisest saying, you know, of all time, one of them. And uh, staying out of debt, spending less money, this gets you to freedom as fast as possible. Don't chase making money to the exclusion of making money when you can make massive changes to the other side of the equation. You don't need as much money as you think you do if you're not consuming as much as you are today. Get outside. Hey Lucy. Hi baby. Get outside and connect with nature. It's really important that we are outside and we're experiencing walking hand in hand with the natural ecosystem and the worlds that we live in. One of the biggest problems with society today is that we're not in contact with our waste. We're not in contact with closing our loop and where the cost of our lives ends up going. It's not until you know you have your own river or stream, you have um, you know, a walking trail that you walk down and you see litter everywhere, you see plastic everywhere. It's not until you see these things that it really gets you angry. It's very easy to fall into the whole consumerism lifestyle when you never see the consequences of that lifestyle. So get outside and enjoy nature. Get outside and enjoy all the wonderful beings that are outside, the birds that are chirping. Enjoy the insects, learn about them. Take photos with your phone and learn about the insects you're seeing. Get a bird ID app, learn about the birds you're seeing. Get outside and ID plants, find out their uses. Learn about the natural world that's all around you. Because when you see that and when you get connected to it, that's when we fight to the death to protect it. One thing that I can tell you 100% is that there is no better place for you to have a conversation and connect with your kids than outside in a garden. Do you ever find that you're at a kitchen table, you're eating dinner together, and you're talking to your kids about, you know, what did you do today? And they're like, nothing. Who did you talk to? No one. What did you do at recess? Nothing. Kids just don't really want to talk to their parents in general it's just the way that it is and what I found is it wasn't until we got outside doing things I mean even if it's a hike in the woods that is a really there's just something about nature there's something about being outside that just it pulls the walls down it disarms us it opens us up it's just something about nature that's just bonding 
and to me there's no place where that's amplified the most than when you combine nature with food so whether that's in a garden or what I think is even more impactful is in a food forest when you're walking around and you're foraging and you're teaching your kids the berries that they're eating the things that they can the plants that they can actually consume safely and they're actually into it and then they experience that butterfly flying down the path you know and everyone stops talking and you just look at that butterfly and then you look at each other and you're just like that was pretty cool or a bird lands on a tree right next to you you just start talking you get disarmed and there's no better way to spend quality time with your kids than outside in a garden and it just it bonds you so whether that's your kids whether that's your spouse whether it's a first date there's no better first date than walking around a food forest walking around a garden you know I'm probably um, biased but there's no better place to exist on this planet with another human being than inside of a forest the next thing on my list is to start cooking especially now with covid and lockdowns you know ontario we just entered into a big lockdown a lot of families experiences with each other right now is everyone on their own tablet computer phone tv doing their own thing um, and i think what we need now is connection you know work on building your family together work on experiencing moments with each other with things that bond you together there's no better way than in a garden or cooking so get cooking your own food get teaching your kids how to cook kids are really interested by learning how to cook in fact one of our friends their kid uh, Wyatt he started his own YouTube channel because he's really into cooking he does a lot of research with his videos and with his recipes and then he goes and does it and he's doing it with his mom and he's putting it out on YouTube he's invested in the channel and I just think I think it's amazing to do that kind of thing with your kids to connect with them you know what's better that or everyone sitting on the screen sometimes it's hard to get kids off of the screen but nature and cooking is a really easy way to get them into something real so um, by the way, if anyone wants to check out Wyatt's channel, it's called Cooking with Wyatt, and I'll leave a link in the description below. It's really good. I think he's making cheesecake this weekend. I told him to make a cool video, um, and then I'd mention him. So go check out Cooking with Wyatt on YouTube, and the link's in the description below. Tying it all back into the environmentalism, cooking your own food is a massive way to cut down packaging, to cut down stuff like palm oil use for example just on the palm oil the rainforests across the world are being cut down to plant palm plantation monocultures palm oil tends to be concentrated in um, processed foods and non-fresh foods so if you're going to the grocery store and you're buying processed foods you know by implicit uh, association you're supporting palm monocultures and that's not to make you feel guilty about it but to empower you to start a garden grow your own food buy fresh food buy local which I'll talk next and start cooking your own food and then you start learning about how can I can and store my own food and the next thing you know you have a beefed out pantry with fresh nutritious food that you created that you're storing and now you're actually more resilient to disruptions like COVID. My next recommendation is to buy local. So we grow a ton of our own food here and um, most of it's actually perennials and you know large fruit and nut trees that are gonna be getting bigger and bigger every year. So over time, more and more of my food is just gonna naturally come from my own land. Um, it's a very good thing to get set up early in your life as soon as you can get these trees growing but we don't actually grow everything that we eat so for example we do eat butter we we buy salt we buy sugar there's things that we actually do buy I can't grow coffee here so uh, as much as we try to eat as much as we can from the garden we try to eat as much greens as we can we do buy stuff 
So just try to focus on buying everything that you can local. And the less food that you grow, the more important this is. For many reasons, buying your greens more local means that they've spent less time in transport. And like I was mentioning earlier, that actually means that they're straight up more nutritious. And when you decide on what you're buying, you're comparing a bag of $2 carrots from Walmart to maybe half as many carrots for $2 from the farmer's market, nutrient-wise, you might actually be breaking even. And then you don't have the packaging of the carrots, you don't have the transportation carbon footprint with the carrots that you're buying from thousands of miles away. So when you can, try to buy local. And that goes for everything. Anywhere that I can, I try to support the most local grower or um, producer that I can. A lot of my fruit trees comes from a local orchard because I don't want to buy trees or seeds from far away and have them shipped across the country. A lot of my trees, people ask me where I get trees from. Um, you know, my recommendation is always go find what local growers sell your trees. Buy from them. Don't buy from somewhere near me. Buy from somewhere near you because then also the variety and the genetics of the trees that you're buying are more suited to your local growing environment where the trees are going to have to grow. Same with seeds. So the genetics of, say, a carrot that grew well in Missouri might be very different than the genetics of a carrot that would grow well here. So I always try to buy from places like the Ontario Seed Company for me in Ontario here because I know that they're saving seeds from the best plants that they had and therefore their best performers will more likely be my best performers compared to if I bought seeds from a California company where they're taking their largest plants, saving their best seeds, packaging it, shipping it, and selling it. And then um, now I'm planting the variety of plants, specifically the single plant that produced the seed that did well in California, and I'm planting it here in Ontario. It just doesn't make sense. So always buy local. My last recommendation is probably going to be my most important recommendation. Plant more trees and spread more seeds. We just need more stuff growing everywhere, whether that's to sequester carbon or to build habitat and food for nature to stop the collapsing ecosystems and environments. Insects, animals, soil life, loss of topsoil, it fixes everything. Tree roots and plant roots will stabilize soils so that waters and rains running across them won't leach topsoil into lakes, rivers, and oceans. There'll be food for insects. There'll be food for birds. Every single ecosystem on the planet grows to the point of the amount of food and energy it has available to it. So it's just straight up thermodynamics that the more energy we are collecting from the sun, the more root exudates are going down into the soil, the more complex carbon sugars that the bacteria and fungus are eating, the more their populations swell, the more nutrients are being cycled from them taking apart the minerals in the soil, creating aggregates for the trees, building soil, more fertile soil, more plants. It's a giant snowball effect. More plants, more food, more energy, more soil, more plants, more food, more energy. And this is how we rebuild the planet. Plant more plants. So I had a video out last fall called No Land, No Problem, where I basically went out and just planted plants, seeds everywhere. I saved walnuts, acorns, chestnuts, hazelnuts, seeds from flowers on my property. I go walking through nature trails, save seeds from there, and I just scatter them in places where there's no food. It takes almost no time and effort to do this. It's extremely fulfilling and rewarding. I can't describe how cool it is when you're driving to work and then you look into that field and you see baby oaks and maples and chestnuts and you know they're growing there because you planted them there. Birds sitting on it pecking away at service berries off of a tree that you planted five years ago. So don't let your lack of land stop you from creating a massive change on this planet. Everything I talked about today, it saves you money, it makes you healthier, 
it adds soul food, it makes you more fulfilled, and it will literally change who you are as a person for the better. Thanks everyone for watching. I'll see you on the next time.